the view I mean, I know all of us were kind of excited to watch it yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it was interesting because there was Sunny was as awful as I expected her to be. But the others mm -hmm. were at least at least Joy Behar was semi reasonable at, at first. Uh, Alyssa Farah, very reasonable. Here's uh, Joy. The system works. We live in a democracy. Mm -hmm. People spoke. This is what people wanted. I vehemently disagree with the decision mm -hmm. that Americans made. But I feel very, very hopeful that we have a democratic system in this country. We should value it. We should love it. We should protest if, we, if the situation arises that we need to protest, which I'm sure it will. And I've been through this before with Nixon. It's been very difficult. But boy, oh boy, do we have a country if we can keep it. Yeah. If we can keep it. They're just so hyperbolic. I mean, these, they're so dramatic, these women. If we can keep it, we basically just narrowly escaped communism with yeah. the people that they wanted, you know, get bent. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alyssa um, was very, very reasonable. I thought, I mean, she was offering the right sort of mindset about learning from this result and actually she listening yeah. to the other side. Here's what she well, said. Um, is it the outcome I wanted? No, but we live in a democracy. I have my vote. Right. Millions of people cast their votes did. Um, and, and what's important to me is this. Tens of millions of Americans, our friends, our neighbors, our family members, voted for Donald Trump. We disagree with him. I know we all do at this table, but they are good, decent people who are patriots and love this country. And I can't speak to what drove them to the conclusion of being with him, but I think it is a moment for us to listen to each other, to hear each other, express what our concerns are. I've spent the last four years doing that. And also listen to people who are with him because this is a country that there is truly more that unites us than divides us. I know it doesn't feel like that for many people in this moment, but we need to bring down the temperature, the name calling, the demonizing, let the other side, let, let the, you know, if they want to do that, they can do it. But I think it is a moment to listen to the voters. And this, I have to say, I've always thought he could win. I thought in the final stretch, she might eke it out. I didn't expect it to be this resounding. And I think there are some lessons from it. I think we forget about rural America. I think the working class feels left behind. They feel like the powerful, the elite only care about them and their power. And he spoke to them. We may not have liked his words, but they turned out for him. I mean, the map was, it, it was beyond Reagan what we saw last night. And I think really. we need to start listening more about the concerns of everyday said, Americans really. who feel like this system is failing. When Reagan won she, Joy mm -hmm. was like, not really. Well, you're not learning. But that was really reasonable from Alyssa. Somewhat, somewhat reasonable. What mm -hmm. wasn't reasonable? I, I mean, I just, I, I think that she, I, I think there's a, I don't trust her. I well, just yeah. Don't. I mean, you I can, don't. Yeah. If you're, if you just flat think she's lying, then that's obviously right. Problem. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if she's lying or not. I just don't trust her. I think she's kind of a weasel. Anybody who calls himself a, a Republican and then says some of the crap that she spews out of her face. I just don't trust her. So I think there's a little bit of pandering there. I think there's like the day after, I think she's kind of like, well, I mean, we need to listen to these sweet little cute people in the rural areas. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're uneducated, but we should maybe listen to them once in a while. I just don't like her. I think she <laughs> is pandering a little bit and I don't, I'll believe it when I see it. If she starts yeah. actually listening, but I think for the most part, I think she's kind of full of shit, but that's nice if you think she's reasonable. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying I don't like her at all, but I think that was actually a reasonable take because so many mm -hmm. other people are like losing their shit. And she was like, hey, maybe we should actually learn from this. Yeah. Like, wouldn't that be something? You know it's what I nice. mean? Yeah, it's good. Maybe good intentions. Right we'll, right. we'll see if she actually learns. You need serious help if you've got a dog that's itchy, scratchy. Here is your s solution. It's Coat Defense's preventative powder for dogs. They also have similar product for cats, for horses even. And they even have a line of products for humans, which, by the way, this is, this is the bottle of the dog shampoo, but it looks just like the bottle of the human shampoo. And I actually really love it. Like, you know how... If you're a woman, you probably have 17 different bottles of shampoo in your shower because Guilty. you don't just use, right? Because yes. we don't use the same thing every single day. Mm -hmm. 
Because we all believe, wrongly or rightly, <laughs> that our hair needs to switch it up a little. Right. I don't know why we do this, but we do. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I like to do is just like once a week, I will use the Coat Defense People Shampoo because it's just so gentle. And so if you're like between washes or you just you, you maybe need to wash, but you don't want like, you know, to absolutely rip all the goodness out of your hair, that is the best stuff. And it has this really nice citrusy smell. It's really, really great. But of course, their signature product is the preventative powder, which takes care of so many of the problems that uh, that are common to dogs, which make them itch, which make them scratch, which make them chew their paws. All that stuff is so easily treatable with Coat Defense. And you can get it at CoatDefense.com. When you use code CHICKS, you will save 15% off of your entire order. CoatDefense.com. Sunny Hostin has not learned. She is nope. awful. Um, and we've got a couple clips of her, the first where she's just reacting, but then also a second clip where she, they had on, I think one of the pollsters to kind of work through, like, here's what the, here's how everything shook out demographic wise. And man, she is so mad at white women at, well, at everybody, but here's her initial reaction. Disturbed. Um, I think if you look at the New York times this morning, uh, the headline was America makes a, a perilous choice. <laughs> I think that in 2016, we didn't know what we would get from um, a Trump administration, but we know now. And um, we know now that he will have almost unfettered power. And so I worry, that. not about myself, actually. I don't worry about my station in life. I worry about the working class. Oh, God. I no, worry about my mother, a retired teacher. Yeah. I worry about our elderly and their social security and their medical care. No, I worry don't. about my children's future, mm -hmm. especially my daughter who now has less rights than I have. Really? And I remember my father telling me many, many years ago that I was the first person in, in his family to enjoy full civil rights. And now I have less civil rights than How? I had when he told me that. So again, I am profoundly disturbed that the 14th Amendment of the Constitution did not prevent someone who participated in an insurrection from becoming president of the United States. Well. I the narcissism. Oh my God. Is just, it's just astounding to me. Like, she's like, I don't worry about my lot in life because I'm awesome and so wealthy. And like, I don't worry about, cause I'm up here, but I worry about like the poor people down like here. Like my no, you mom. Don't. <laughs> right. Why haven't you, if you worry about, if you worry about your mom, why don't you help her since you're up here? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh my God. Like I just, she's dripping and narcissism mm -hmm. and elitism. And I cannot with this woman. What rights has she lost? Like in the same breath, she says, I don't worry about myself, but I've lost civil rights. What are those? List them. I'd like to hear them. They never can. <laughs> What well, rights? and she's so, I mean, the, the arrogance gets even worse in this clip where she's basically demanding answers from this pollster about the demographics and, and what, what specific identity politic group is to blame for this horrible outcome. Right. Mm -hmm. And even at one point in this clip, you're about to see Alyssa has to jump in and say, maybe people don't like being called uneducated. Like maybe just Ease maybe that's why that. maybe, maybe that's why you lost yeah like maybe yeah. stop being such a huge biatch yeah but it's to no avail here's that clip i want to dig further into into the demographics because uh black women tried to save this country again last night 92 oh percent of black women voted oh for God. uh the vice president <laughs> you have latinas in the 70 percentile uh, voting Latina. for the vice president what we did not have is white women who voted about 52 percent right uh for donald trump uneducated white women is my understanding you have latino men actually latino. voting more for him and you have um and black men was not the story we're not the story here because yeah. they voted almost 80 percent for the vice president right so why do you think that uneducated white women voted against their reproductive health freedoms and why do you think latino men uh voted in favor of someone that's going to deport, says he's going to deport the majority think white, of his white community. Women like being called uneducated white women. I think the but economy the, matters, national the, security matters. Uh, but, but when you put people in these boxes, I think that's a takeaway from yes. this but we, race. We, ha we yeah. have to look at, yeah. at the demographics of it. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> do we? Do we? Okay, I think oh Latino men <laughs> and and uneducated women, like we're white women. Uh, 
I'm sorry, white women, you know, we stupid white women out here, I guess, even with a master's degree, I think she would probably call me uneducated, you know, because <laughs> I mean, I'm white. Cause look at me, I have like, I'm a person of pallor. So just therefore I am uneducated. We're, I, I think we're probably some of the ones who saved the country. Don't you think? I'm, I feel very good about the outcome. I and feel my very, <laughs> I, uh, bravo. I think we did it. But <laughs> Latino men would probably say the same, you know? It's ridiculous. Like the, the segmentation is exactly what people were giving a middle finger to. And she That's still where, doesn't get it. I, at least will, Alyssa seems to get it. You know what I mean? Starting, she's the, the light's starting to go on a little bit. Exactly. It's starting to go on. And she, but I still think that, you know, yeah, she has sins to pay for of the past, <laughs> you know, yes. but, 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 you know, Sunny, she'll, she'll never get it. I don't think no, she's ever going to get so it. so bitter and and, the, awful. and I think. And I think part of it, Mock, is because so many of these liberals, they want so badly to be victims. It's like that is like the liberal way. We're not that way. Conservatives don't, we, we don't want to be victims. Right. We just want to live a good life. We love America. There's nothing victim-y about us. You know what I mean? We're just like, America rocks, man. It's like the greatest place. You can do anything you want to do. It's what I tell my kids. Whatever you put your mind to. J.D. Vance says this all the time too, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, it's the American dream. It's still alive. I believe in that. I know so many of you guys believe in that. I know you believe in it, Mock. I mean, your parents, they came here from Poland and look at you. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> your family's awesome. Like, I, I believe in that. And I think so many of us do. And they crap on it. And they say that this country sucks and they they're negative and they want to be victims. And we are just not that way. Yeah. We're not. Uh, last clip from The View. And that is a kind of amazing one where they, again, lack so much self-awareness. They're bitching about not having enough regulation against social media companies and, and pissed off that there's not enough critical thinking happening out there. Too many people are trusting other sources outside of regular mainstream news media sources Them. to get their information. And I just, how do they not hear what they're saying and absorb it like in the right way? But here they are. Kids in nursery school are learning to discern between fake news and real news. Yeah. They should be teaching that in this country. Yeah. Teach children tolerance, teach them to think critically. Well, it would help if we could regulate social media because one of the oh biggest defenders is DC and Congress have not been able to do one thing oh. in regard to the <laughs> rogue corporations not gonna get any like better with, with, with Elon Musk now in the, in the administration. I want to I want and She was talking about Finland. She was talking about how Finland teaches their kids to think critically or whatever. And I, okay. So they want to regulate social media. They want to regulate podcasts. Mm. They're, they're commies. 